Long ago, Shona people often swam in rivers without wearing any clothes. Wasn't that embarrassing? Hello everyone. Welcome to another video on my channel, where we dive into the fascinating world of ancient African cultures. Imagine a time when people could swim freely, without fear or judgment. Back in the golden days of the Shona people, when innocence and trust ruled the rivers. In today's video, we're exploring what used to happen as part of the Shona traditions and customs. Did people really swim naked and nothing happened? This sounds surreal. Let's find out how it reflects the values of a simpler, more genuine era. Join me as we dive into this piece of cultural wisdom. Today, let's go way back in time to explore the traditions of the Shona people of Zimbabwe. Let's begin with looking at the Shona people and their connection to nature. One of the unique things about the Shona people was their close, respectful connection to nature. They viewed rivers, trees, and mountains as gifts from Mori, the creator, and they lived in harmony with these natural wonders. Long ago, Shona people often swam in rivers without wearing any clothes. You might wonder why. Wasn't that embarrassing? Actually, back then, it wasn't embarrassing at all. Swimming without clothes was normal and practical. Imagine if you lived in a small village like Mue or Masvingo and didn't have swimsuits. The river was a place for bathing, fishing, and even storytelling. Elders like Teet Nairai or Sekiru Tendai would tell stories, and children would play in the water, learning to swim naturally. In those days, nudity was just a part of life. It wasn't seen as strange. Bodies were respected, and nobody looked at it in a shameful way. It was simply a way to stay cool, clean, and connect with the flowing waters that gave life to their crops and animals. The river was part of their identity, like a member of the village. Why did they swim naked? Practical reasons of the past. The Shona people believed that everything should have a purpose. Why wear clothes in the river when they would get heavy and uncomfortable? People swam without clothes because it made swimming easier and was more comfortable. Children from small villages like Gutu or Kariba could splash and dive freely. Rivers were not just places for swimming, they were places of community. Villagers shared stories and learned from one another, all while playing or washing by the riverside. Swimming also had a practical side. Some believed it made them stronger and connected them to the spirit of water. Rivers like the Zambezi or Ruya held cultural significance, and by swimming freely, they were paying respect to the spirits in the water. There was no shame, only a sense of belonging to something bigger than themselves. Pros of old traditions. It allowed freedom and comfort, especially in hot weather. People developed a strong bond with nature, respecting rivers and wildlife. It created a strong sense of community and shared culture. Cons of old traditions. Without clothes, some might feel unprotected from sharp rocks or fish. Dangerous animals, like crocodiles, posed a real risk in the rivers. But the Shona people managed these risks with wisdom passed down over generations. They knew which parts of the river were safest and when it was okay to swim. What changed? Modernization and Western influence. The practice of swimming naked among the Shona people in the past is reflective of the natural, innocent relationship that many traditional societies had with their bodies and their environment. In many cultures, before the influence of modernization and the imposition of Western values, nudity was often not associated with shame or sexuality but with practicality and cultural norms. For the Shona, as with many other African groups, Swimming in rivers or lakes was a communal activity that was done out of necessity, for leisure, or as part of daily life. The lack of clothing while swimming was likely due to practical reasons. There was no need for special swimming attire, and the environment was natural, 
without the societal pressures or judgments that would come with modern perspectives on nudity. The innocence associated with these practices comes from the cultural context. Nudity in such settings was not sexualized or considered inappropriate. People were focused on the functional aspect of swimming, and the community's perception of the body was more aligned with practicality rather than taboo. It's a reminder of how perspectives on nudity and modesty can vary greatly across cultures and historical periods. As societies evolved and external influences, such as colonialism and the introduction of Christianity, brought different norms, the cultural attitudes towards nudity likely changed, leading to more conservative views over time. With time, things changed for the Shona people. When the British colonized Zimbabwe, they brought different ideas about clothing and modesty. Suddenly, showing your body was seen as indecent. They built schools and churches that taught children to be proper by covering their bodies. People began to feel shy or embarrassed, and swimming with no clothes became something shameful rather than natural. Nowadays, if you go to the cities like Harare or Bulawayo, you'll see everyone swimming with swimsuits. People wear clothing because of Western influence, but also because of a new awareness of safety. Rivers are less clean, and modern conveniences like towels and swimsuits make covering up easier and more practical. Pros of new practices. Clothes can protect from dirty water, sharp objects, and insects. Swimsuits are safer and help people feel more comfortable in public places. Cons of new practices. People feel less connected to nature. The rivers are no longer places for community gatherings. Some traditions and beliefs are slowly forgotten as younger generations adopt modern lifestyles. Why this story matters today. Knowing about these traditions helps us appreciate the wisdom and beauty of African cultures like that of the Shona people. Their traditions remind us of a time when nature and humans lived as one. While times have changed, there is something we can all learn from the Shona way of life, respect for the environment, love for community, and the beauty of simplicity. As we move forward, it's important to remember where we come from, the stories of our ancestors, and the traditions that shaped us. Thank you for joining me on this journey back in time. If you enjoyed this story, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Until next time, keep exploring and celebrating our rich African heritage.